アイリスケオリー You know them, you love them from such classics as this And this And this They seem to come out of nowhere in the 20 teens. And in short order, we're doing things like getting nominated for three Grammys. And I'm not going to do the liner notes author thing of trying to use words to describe their music. Just listen more. Okay, so behind all of this is the drumming of one Mr. Perrin Moss, who, again, not going to describe his style, just this. And this. I will say, I, among many drummers, love this group, love Perrin's drumming, and kindled the fantasy that someday maybe Perrin Moss would have a month long silent meditation retreat scheduled during the exact month the group was going on tour, and maybe. The call would come to us. But what would you do if you got that call? Head to learn the whole hiatus catalog and play it convincingly on stage. Could you do the gig? Well, today I'm using myself as the experimental subject, throwing myself into the blender and asking the very same question. I'm going to be learning a handful of hiatus' s most famous songs, and I've only got two days to do it. Will I succeed, fall on my face, or shuffle my way into anonymous, mediocre tedium? That last one kind of has a nice link to it, actually. Plus, we use these tunes to show you what's unique and difficult about these amazing songs and Perrin Moss's drumming. Today on 8020, could you do the gig? Hiatus Coyote Edition. Stay tuned. This exact situation has, of course, happened in real life to people like JP Bouvet. And fans of this series will have heard this, so I'll keep it short. Anyway, JP had to learn an entire catalog of periphery songs. But to keep this video short, today I won't be learning the entire hiatus catalog, I'll just be learning three songs. But we want to frame this exercise to make it interesting. I want to make it as much like I had to do the gig on short notice as possible. So let's talk about the rules. The first rule is that no matter what songs I choose, I need to learn them in no more than three practice days. That's to mimic a short notice gig. The second rule is I get a maximum of three takes of any of the songs. Those takes can be spread out over three days, but I've got a maximum of three opportunities to either nail the song or not. That's to simulate something like a tight rehearsal schedule. And also just add more drama. Here's a rule I'm not gonna make. I'm not gonna pledge that any of these songs will be completely new to me. As a longtime hiatus fan, I will have heard every song multiple times. But as you'll see, the songs are complex enough that hearing them casually is a long way from playing them in detail. Plus, a super fan who got the call to sub probably would know a lot of the band's catalog already. Oh, and it's worth mentioning that the format of this challenge will be recording under the gun. Just because I need to do that anyway to show how I play the songs. And that's the closest low effort way to kind of mimic the pressure of performing. Okay, let's talk about the songs. For the three songs in this challenge, I'm going to choose three off of Choose Your Weapon, which the band released in 2015. Two I've never played before, and one I have. The first is a great example of both what makes this band so unique and why its songs can be difficult to learn. It's called Shaolin Monk Mother Funk. We'll talk in a minute about what's involved, but it combines backbeat, big band swing, Dilla beats, and whatever this is. It's a lot, but also a lot of fun. The second song is Breathing Underwater, for which the band was nominated for a Grammy. Like Shaolin Monk, it combines a bunch of different drumming styles, dynamics, and figures to hit all under one roof. For the third, I'm choosing By Fire, which I've actually played before. But it's time to take it out of mothballs, dust it off, and answer the question Could I do the gig? Now, let's tackle these puppies. Coyote puppies. Coyote puppies.
The first song I tackled was Breathing Underwater. Let's use the actual song and my day one take of it to illustrate what this song involves. The song starts with this undulating guitar riff in slow four. Drums come in at around the one minute mark with this groove. Here's my first attempt. There's this little section which repeats, which I call the woodblock thing. And here's my best approximation on my first run through. Here's what you'd call the chorus, which has a really specific drum part. There's this transition. And finally this outro, which has a really fun beat. Let's get in here quickly to talk about one of the most interesting aspects of this song, the woodblock beat. Here I am playing it without any music. And here it is slowed down. Am I sure this is exactly what Perrin played? No, but I have good evidence it's close because check this live clip. Remember, when we're learning things on short notice for a gig, it's about making things functional and musical. We'll save perfection for the kitchen. Anyway, with all this stuff in mind, it was time to record my second and final take on the song, which will determine whether I learned it well enough to do a hypothetical last minute sub for Hiatus Coyote. All right, practice those all. Um, Underwater felt much better, just did a take. We'll listen to that, see if it's a good final take. Either way, I'm gonna share that one with my coaching group. Uh, but yeah, they all felt better. Tomorrow, I'm gonna come back and record uh, By Fire and Shaolin Monk. All right. Let's see how I did on this final take. The first challenge is getting into the verse so it's grooving. The next is that woodblock beat. Then there's this little chorus breakdown. Then there's this second ending thing that ramps up to the release. Then the big release. And finally, this little outro. So, what do you think? Could I do the gig? Could you? Leave a comment below. And if you want to post your own cover of this song, just use the hashtag 8020challenge to make sure I'll see it. Well, hey you guys, back for day two. We still have By Fire and Shaolin Monk to do. I'm gonna practice Shaolin Monk, eat a little bit, and then we'll record them both. The next song to tackle was arguably the hardest to learn. 
Shaolin Monk Mother Funk. After a little intro, the drums come in here, hitting this subtle figure. Then it's into the first verse. We have these figures to hit going into the chorus. Then the chorus itself kind of disintegrates and the whole vibe changes to this. It builds and builds to this. Then the Dilla section. Then the verse comes back, all big bandy with the same figures, but with the phrase shifted to a different point in the 8 bar cycle. Then there's the outro. Hey guys, I gotta get in here to show you one really cool thing about this phrase. In both the intro and the Dilla section, there's this kind of thumping heartbeat riff, which sounds like it's on the downbeats, and the little hits on the upbeats. When you get into the song, you realize the heartbeat was really on 16th note upbeats, and the figures were the downbeats. To play this right without getting turned around, you kind of have to keep that in your head. Okay, as you were. So I listened to my first take while eating lunch. Then I practiced a few things, like the exact numbers of bars I'd have to vamp before catching a hit, how to get into the slow chorus, how to get into the Dilla, etc. When that was over, it was time to record take two, and I hope this would be my final take. Somebody better check the security feed, cause one day Johnny's back in the house. Let's listen to a little of my second and final take of Shaolin to answer the question, could I do the gig? The first challenge is this intro. Then it's get that verse beat hopping. Then there are figures into the pre-chorus. And the little big band thing. Then the tempo slowing and cueing the chorus. There's getting out of that and the Dilla section. Then there's the final verse with all the big bend hits. And finally, the breakdown. How do you think I did? Could I do the gig? Leave a comment below. Want to participate yourself? Record your own cover of Shaolin Monk and post it to Instagram with the hashtag 8020challenge. All right, well, I'm heck at rusty on all of that. Um, gosh, there's a lot of rusty on in By Fire. Um, there's a lot I don't remember. For our final tune, we're revisiting By Fire, which I recorded in 2016. Not with the band, just a little drum cover in my Anyway, let's go through by fire and talk about what makes it so cool, unique, and difficult. The verse starts with this beat, which is a little five bar phrase. You've got pretty specific things to catch.
There's a little breakdown, then the second verse comes right in. Then almost the whole second half of the song is this part, which I guess we can call the chorus. But it's interrupted by this reprise from the verse. Finally, everything gets quiet. Hey, cutting in again to show you how I crash course this five bar phrase from the verse of By Fire. First, I'm gonna play it without any embellishments, just the backbeats and kick drum along with the bass line. Here's the hi-hat lick that's the basis for what the right hand plays in this beat. And here's what the beat sounds like if you just add in that hat pattern and catch a couple other kick drum notes in musical spots. Pretty close, right? Okay, got a pretty good take of by fire. There are a couple of those little connective tissue fills that I didn't completely nail. Ah, oh, that stuff's annoying. I think if I were really doing the gig though, I'd probably have enough to be dangerous, I hope. With that practice take out of the way, I set out to record the business take of By Fire. Let's listen along and ask yourself, could you do the gig? Here's the tricky little intro with hats and crash cymbal bell. Now here's the beat in the first verse. The little dance off. And the dotted chord or Dilla thing in the chorus. Now, the circus thing. And the final dance off. And the second Dilla chorus. And finally, the quiet outro. So what have we learned? It was fun to go back to my roots and play some hiatus. Doing a gig like this isn't just about hitting the notes, but also in large part about the energy. But I think bringing the real swagger to songs like this probably requires lots of repetitions. I feel pretty confident I could lock up with the band and hit the figures correctly, but whether I could bring the vibe on night one, I'll leave that for others to determine. Anyway, if you enjoyed the drumming in this and you'd like to make your own drumming better, I recommend my completely free three video mini course. You can get that by clicking the link below the player, entering your email address in on the next page, and it's yours, completely free. Did I mention it's free? Anyway guys, thanks for tuning in. Always enjoy these. I'll see you again really soon in another lesson of the week.